And this was a wild finish in the bay. This one would come down to the wire. Steph Curry is going to go ahead and knock down a jumper here with six seconds left, and he gets fouled. He will go on to make the free throw. Of course he does. That puts the Warriors up by two. That was a foul? Nuggets get, I know, right? Phantom foul. <laughs> Nuggets one last try. Monty Morris gets the look from three over Steph Curry. Buckets. And Morris delivers the game winner, 117-116. A huge win for the Nuggets. I mean, the name of the game is winners and losers, so how do I not pick the first winners calling game? It's Monty Morris. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you did. he did just that. First game winning buzzer beater for the Nuggets since the Joker did it nearly two years ago. And by the way, I did a little research. That is the 800 game winning buzzer beater in league history, according to Taylor Twelman's encyclopedia. I mean, sorry, basketball <laughs> reference. How dare you do research? That's I not know, what seriously, we do. This show is not Here based on, on Fox Nation. What is this guy doing? Bringing <laughs> substance? How dare you? <laughs> Loser holding the lead. Something that the Warriors simply couldn't do. Golden State led by 10 in the fourth. This is their first loss this season when leading by 10 or more points in the final frame. Before yesterday, get this. Undefeated in 32 such games this season. Yep, we wow. saw it with the Pistons, we saw it with the Celtics. A lot of streaks being broken. On Wednesday's Get Up, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver spoke on the New York City vaccination mandate that's preventing Brooklyn Nets guard Kyrie Irving from playing in home games. As a player unvaccinated against COVID-19, Irving isn't allowed to play at the Barclays Center because of the mandate. However, a player from a different market who is unvaccinated may play in New York City. Here is Mr. Silver. This law in New York, the, the oddity of it to me is that it only applies to home players. I mean, I think if we're, if, if, if ultimately that rule is about protecting people who are in the arena, it just doesn't quite make sense to me that an away player who's unvaccinated can play in Barclays, but the home player can't. So I, I, to me, that's a reason they should take a look at that ordinance. I, I get what Adam Silver's saying. We all have thought it, been thought it for a long time. Agreed. Why is he saying this now, know, Taylor? Jordan. Why now? Jordan, I, I, there, why there's now? a conspiracy to me on this because even when the mandate came out, and I remember in October and even parts of November, where even on, the, on this show and multiple shows uh, on this network, we were looking at it say, the, you could already read and tell that a, an away player that was unvaccinated could play. So now you're, you're coming into it. The playoffs are just around the corner. You've got unbelievable potential with the Brooklyn Nets and the 76ers rivalry right now. And my biggest question is, do you think Adam Silver is talking about this right now if the Nets are one of the top four seats? I'd argue probably not. But you need your biggest stars as any business. You need your best operating at the most important time. And I get why he's doing this. My only question is, you could have been doing this in November. You could have been doing this in December. And I get outside of New York City, and quite frankly, it's all over the country, you're starting to see some of the mandates relax and change. And so now maybe Adam Silver looks at it with the power of the owner saying, now you've got a little bit more leg room to actually speak up about this. But the mandate has been there since November, December. So I don't understand why now all of a sudden he's raising a stink about it. I think it's because there's playoffs in his business. Most important time is coming around the corner. We hit all the, you hit all the key spots there. I mean, look, California has Coachella not even requiring vax cards. California, yep. all those people there? Yep. California was one of the most strict with this whole thing. We thought we'd have to be showing vax cards going into the Super Bowl and wearing masks the whole time. I was there. Wasn't the case. So, yeah, I think Adam Silver is assessing the landscape and going, seems like we're trending in a direction where Kyrie Irving shouldn't really be out. But furthermore, you touched on this a little bit as well. Adam Silver wants the rivalries. Yep. Are you kidding me? Oh, ben Simmons and Joe L. Embiid, those two could be New York, fierce Philadelphia, rivals. East Coast. You've Great got markets. It. Absolutely. James Harden apparently didn't get Absolutely. along with Kyrie Irving. You want to see this all play out. Yep. These are storylines. This is ratings gold. Adam Silver's trying to apply a little bit of pressure here publicly because he wants to see this thing come to fruition. He wants the Nets to be at full strength to get into those playoffs and play those six. And I think you and I both agree. We want to make this abundantly clear. We agree with Adam Silver. We're just we're talking Who about doesn't? the timing. Who exactly. sees the correlation and goes, that makes sense. Away players can come in here and play. Agreed. But the home players can't. It's no. ridiculous. And we're just now hearing it from Silver because he understands. we got to get something done. So now the most important part of the show is around the association because the Chicago Bulls fan next to me thinks that DeMar DeRozan is going to be the MVP. Can't believe we waited this long to talk about it. But here we are around the association. DeMar DeRozan's got people saying, Wilt, who? He scored 38 points in break 
making a mark set by one of the most dominant players in league history, Wilt Chamberlain. DeRozan, 6 of 27 from the field, became the first player in league history to score 35 or more points and shoot 50% or better in seven consecutive games. MJ didn't do it. Kobe never. The King never. DeMar gets my MVP vote. I said what I said. Bulls are the fifth best team in the East, but don't let that. Oh, stop it. Suns hosting the Rockets, and it's not CP3, but it's CP2. Hey, wait a second. I was here on time today. Chris Paul Tech. Oh, Slow your roll. This I'm isn't sorry. about culture for you. Chris <laughs> Paul got teed up arguing with an official about jamming his right hand. Then watch as he bumps into the official for a second technical. Devin Booker said Paul was fine during the postgame. CP3 left Suns. Beat the Rockets 124-121. I didn't think you were going there, but you never know, Taylor. I you never do. know. Hawks taking on the magic. Snatching ankles. That's what Trey Young was doing after he folds Franz Wagner like a folding chair. Dishes it to oh, Bogdan Bogdanovich <laughs> for the three. Take another look. Sorry, Franz. <laughs> And look, how about the grimace when he goes down? Like, no, I'm going to be a meme. How'd you rip your groin? Um, Trey Young. Was Trey Young just crossovered. <laughs> it happens. John Morant, where are you? Oh, there you are. John Blazers versus the Grizzlies. There's Ja, John ja Morant. Second career 40 point 10 assist game, both coming this season. No other player in Grizzlies history has done this once. Well, of course not. Who's played for the Grizzlies? Anyway, sorry. Zeland tied his career high with 44 points. However, Blazers won on the road, 123, 119. Why are the Grizzlies catching strays here? They What's should. It's Memphis. Fair enough. Celtics hosting the Pistons. Streaks over through the quad to the gymnasium. You with the green Bring hat. Bring your green hat. Yes, sir. That's plural. Jeremy Grant, 24 to help end the Celtics' nine-game winning streak. In the process, the Pistons also ended their eight-game losing streak. Jason Tatum, a chance to win this one in the end, but his shot goes begging. Streaks both over. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.